Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Sage Cameron. This is episode two of Seattle Comedy with Sage Cameron. I don't have Jojo Blacko here, unfortunately. I really, oh my God, if I had Jojo Blacko sitting in the passenger seat right now, all would be right in the world. I would feel so much better. I, I totally would. God damn it. I have no one to hug me right now. I've learned a lot in the past 48 hours, you guys, like enough to break a man. I'd have to break a normal man's brain. I'm not a normal man, though. I'm not. I'm a cool guy. Um, I respect female comedians. That's something cool that I do. I know. It's actually really hard to believe. Sage Cameron respecting a female comedian. Here's the thing with respecting female comedians in comedy, right? Um, when I first broke into the scene, right? Let me just take you back through the Rolodex. I started in stand-up, like, the first ever performance I had. Um, I went to go see my friend Richard Aguirre, Richie Brash, as he's known, um, down at Tacoma Comedy Club, and he was hosting, and he was like, come on, Sage, you gotta sign up for a bucket, man, and I was like, ah, okay, I'll do it, I'm not, I wasn't that, it wasn't that hard to convince me, you know what I'm saying, um, so he convinced me, I signed up for the Lucky Bucket, I got pulled from the first Lucky Bucket, bro, this was probably in September, um, September 17th, if I got the date right, I have to still have the recording, whatever. Um, but I bombed my ass off. You know what I mean? I went up there. I hadn't written any jokes at all, like none. Um, the only thing I had been thinking about in my head was like, um, the only thing I thought about before going on stage was, okay, uh, my Tinder profile says I was driving really fast the other, other day and I slammed on the brakes too hard. And my seatbelt choked me. So that's what I'm looking for, you know? Super dry, no punchline, right? Just like a dry ass premise. That's all I had. And then from choking my brain, because all I, Sage Cameron was really thinking about at that time is he was watching the Palestinian people be genocided. I know that's crazy, right? Watching a genocide. Who could, who could relate to that, right? Crazy times, crazy times. But that was like, as a human being, like watching a genocide unfold, it's hard to believe, but um, it has an impact on a person. Like, like me, my name's Sage. When I watch the Israel gal uh, Gaza, like as I watch Israel genocide of people, it's not a war. Everyone wants you to believe Israel and Palestine. Oh, this is a war between Israel and Hamas. Hamas is, um, so Israel's funded by the United States military. Okay. We know this. Uh, but the, like, I, I, I'm a, I'm an animated guy. I can't put enough animation on how much we fund these guys. Like, you think the United States is armed militarily? Bro, Israel's right behind. Like, they are like the U.S. They're like, I'm trying to think of a country to compare them to, but I really can't. Like, I want to say Nazi Germany, and I know that's wrong to say, but the standards they have in place and the way they treat Palestinians, it's really not far off. It's not at all. And the difference between, like, now and Nazi Germany, you know, because I didn't live through that. I'm a young guy. I was born in 98, right? Um, the interesting part about it is, like, when the Holocaust happened, right, there was, of course, reporters, the press was there, but they didn't have TikTok, you guys. They didn't have Twitter. They didn't have this live stream of the world unfolding the way I do. I'm a 25-year-old man, Seattle comic. I've been living this way, like, where I watch the world unfold in front of me since I was probably, since George Floyd. When I saw the George Floyd video, I cried. I was galvanized by that. Started reading about capitalism, Marxism. I actually started to inquire into the way the world works. I have a lot of people that listen to this podcast that I've talk, talked to about the way the world works, capitalism, whatever the fuck, Sage. Um, and something I get a lot is... Why do you care so much? Yeah, I couldn't imagine reading that. It's too depressing. Y'all are such a bunch of lazy cucks, bro. Like, every single one of you. Like, a people are being genocided, and you're like, hey, my mental health is a little frayed right now. If I read about the ethos and the origin of Israel and learn how corrupt it is, I don't think my mentality can handle that. That, to me, is morally, that's morally bankrupt. So I look at you in a negative light. I'll still be friends with you, of course, and we can totally talk, be friends, whatever. But just know, like, if you, if you ever mentioned mention to me that you stand for Israel or you try to 
say it's a war. You tried to say Hamas is a legitimate threat to, to Israelis. That's another one I love to hear. Or you, you mentioned human shields. Just know, like, we can be friends. We can talk. But I'm going to look at you as a piece of shit underlying. Like, that. that's that's the agreement that I just want to establish. Um, Jesus, guys. I've been hitting mics every day. My mind just goes. I don't even know what I'm talking about here. Let me just tell you about my day. Um, yeah, I woke up today, you know, a normal day. Went out to West Seattle because I was just catching a vibe. I was like, I want to go see the sunset out here. And my brother um, has been in Eastern Washington visiting family. But he lives in West Seattle. Um, so I called him just thinking about him, you know. And I fi- and he's like, oh, I just pulled in. I just got home. I'm like, holy shit. Oh, my God. You just got home? Okay, well, I'm at the beach. And the apartment's like, you know, five-minute walk away fucking let's connect. So I got to talk to him and I, today I cried. I cried a lot today. Today was, and this might sound crazy, but my name is Sage Cameron and this was the best day of my life. It was a cathartic ass day. I learned a lot of shit I didn't want to know. Like if I, if I could put it back in the Pandora's box, man, I would close that box up so fast. I'd be like, holy shit. I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. But now I know. And I know about the misogynistic abusers in the community. And I know about all you pussies that are comics that, um, love to bitch and moan about like the time you're not allotted or when a host cuts you off and you get all butthurt about that. But when it comes time to like defend a female comic from an abuser, fucking crickets. It's hilarious to me. It really is. And, um, I'm not pointing anyone out in particular. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because it's all of you. That's why. Um, I just got to say, like, it's emotional, man. Like, I want to cry. I had a lot of faith in this community, and I still do. I think we have redemption. But um, I'm 79 mics in this year. I did 75 sets last year. So I'm like 158 mics in since I started stand-up. The past 15 mics or so, I would say, and I'm not trying to sound cocky, but like I, I would say I discovered my voice on stage a little bit more. I'm more brash. I understand the dynamic. Um, I feel like I'm leveling up in my comedy, right? So I've hit 158 mics. It took me this long to hear about the stories of um, a comic that runs the door at Club Comedy which is an established, quote-unquote, I'm putting this in air quotes, reputable club. Like, this is where established comedians will come by and do a weekend or whatever. I've heard some shit about the owner that I'm not going to talk about because I don't know him. He's been very nice to me personally. But I know a guy that runs the door there that I've heard some things about with a comic. Um, I'm not going to say any names here. I really don't want to throw anyone under the bus. But just to illustrate where I'm coming from is Sage. Um, when I was 18, uh, I, I was an improviser. I'd been the theater sports captain of my high school theater sports team at Mount Lake Terrace High School. You know, I didn't, I didn't ever really consider trying stand up because I viewed it as a craft that was way too hard and I was way too goofy for, you know what I mean? Like I saw, I knew stand up comedians that respected the craft like set up punch, uh, respect the audience, you know, learn how to host. They understand the game of comedy, you know, and I didn't want to step on their toes. I didn't want to go into the comedy scene as an improviser and be this like hacky guy that's taking stage time away from comedians that are actually trying to do something with their life and be honest and tell humor. Any comedian that's under six years, if you've ever bombed before, Sage Cameron's here to tell you, I'm proud of you. If you have ever slipped up, said a word you weren't supposed to on stage, I love you. I see you. And that's real, bro. I see you. And the fact that I've been hearing these stories in the past 48 hours about comedians I love. And I had no no idea about the beef that these comedians had with these clubs. But the stories I've heard about these clubs banning these comedians. Um... I I can't dip into my rage well. I can't do it because if I get into it, guys, it gets messy. Uh, It gets really messy. And this is, I want to say like, yeah, comedy is a business and it totally is. But we can all acknowledge like 
there's a personal side to comedy, right? Like you're telling your story, your truth. Well, my name's Sage, man. I've been here 158 mics and like my truth is this. I'm again, I'm devastated at the community. I love the club owners at one of these clubs. They've been nothing but kind to me and welcoming. I smoke cigarettes outside with them. They tell me how they support me and they, they thank me for coming by and being a part of the community, buying food and drinks at their venue. You, you know why I buy food there? Because the food's good and they put together a good menu and they hire good people. Or that's what I thought, right? That's what I thought. And then w- another club owner, I did Nate Jackson's comedy club on Tuesday. Okay, I did Nate Jackson's comedy club, super funny comedy club in Tacoma on Tuesday. That was my third mic of the night. It was the high of my life. I was streaking. It was day 32 in a row. I go to sign up for the mic. Guess who's sitting in the audience? Janice fucking Fox. She's a cold-blooded killer. She's a comedian that writes jokes. She is a comedian that listens to people's sets. She's a respectful comedian that respects the craft of stand-up comedy. And when Sage Cameron blows up, I don't give a fuck if it's 20 years. I'm not going to forget Janice Fox. Janice Fox is sitting there with her husband. God bless him. I can't remember his name. I go to sign up on the list. There's a club owner that is I'm following. So a club owner that books for a comedy club is following or is going before me, right? I sign up on the list. I see it. She performs. And I'll be honest. I'm not a fan of her comedy. I'm going to come clean. I don't find her all that funny. But I will say this. When I was there at Nate Jackson's, she had three or four tags that were riffed off the dome that were not jokes she had written that I found hilarious, that I found witty, that I found insightful, that I know was a comic up there. Because someone that goes up on stage and is bullshitting and is faking and is a fraudulent cannot grab the microphone and do what I saw this club owner do on stage. You hear what I'm saying? So I have respect for this club owner as a comic. It kind of hurts to say that with everything I've learned, but I'm going to say it anyways. I have respect for this club owner as a comic. She does their set, right? Does their set. It. I'm going to keep it as vague as possible. It's about alcoholism. Like, that is the premise of the... They mention West Virginia in their set. I think that's funny. I think that's a funny way to go. Especially with alcohol, West Virginia, that paints a picture. So while I'm watching her set, I think in my head, and this is an honest reaction, while she's performing, right, I'm cracking up, everyone knows my laugh, and if you can't envision it right now, I'm cracking up, and I think, holy shit, she, this person would sound so funny if they said the word um, Appalachia, right? Because that's, I mean, that's near West Virginia, whatever, but it's a word that if you say it phonetically, you can hit it in a lot of different ways. Like if this, if this club owner wanted to take that word, she could write five minutes on that word, uh, write no punchlines. But the way she says that word to me, I, I would buy a ticket to go watch that, that because that's funny. Comedy is not all set up punch. Okay. I haven't learned that yet. I'm green. I don't understand how to write a punchline. A thousand and one comics have told me, Sage, you're a premise machine, but motherfucker, please learn how to write a fucking punchline to your jokes. You're like edging me here, you know? And that's valuable feedback. I hear that. And I'm going to keep writing every day. I'm going to keep doing my best. I'm going to keep trying to find those punchlines. Um, but at the same time, I, I'm not looking at this in day to day, you guys. I'm not looking, hey, it's February 23rd, 2024, and tomorrow I'm going to have to deal with a hellfire of consequences for um, learning everything I've learned and, you know, asserting my humanity the best way I know how, which in 2024 happens to be posting on um, Instagram on my stories and sharing my thoughts and tagging the people involved. And beyond that, uh, I'll also share this just in the um, in the spirit of visibility. I started a uh, a group chat on Instagram 
and I shared screenshots of the message I sent the club owners. I was very cordial and kind. And when I sent this message to the group of comics, immediately I was met back with like some sparse remarks like, hey, it's best if you stay out of this. Um, and then there were a couple other comics that I really value their opinions on. Like they are some of my favorite comics on the scene. Uh, they've been there, there for me when I need them. Like in moments where in my comedy journey, I've been like, fuck, another day. I'm going to go bomb my ass off. They have walked into the room and turned that into a night I will never forget. That's the people we're dealing with that were talking to me in this group chat about this. And uh, what I responded was like, hey, I value both of you. Thank you for your feedback. I'll take that into consideration. And I love both of those individuals with my whole heart. Um, and I, I understand, like, when you, when you come into the scene as a comic, we all have our own brands, right? Like Sage Cameron, I'm responsible for what I say. I'm responsible for what I say. I paid the consequences for that motherfucker. And I'm here to say, man, like, um, it's really sad to me that it's really sad to me that when I voice my opinion like this or use my voice and post this on Instagram, it's viewed in the light as some people don't want to get involved. And I get that. I do. We all have to protect our brand. Um, but it's really sad to me that I'm the one that has to do this. You know what I mean? My name is Sage. Like I'm a green comic again. I haven't been around that long. Like I'm not, I'm not claiming to be this Messiah that's been working hard for 10 years and it's my time, right? Like I'm a new guy in 25 years, you won't recognize any of my humor. I get it. I see the vision. Um, I lost my train of thought, bro. Where the fuck was I? I'm going to rip my dab pen really quick and we'll, we'll get back on topic here. So, I'm okay, I'm going to go back to when I was watching the club owner at Nate Jackson's, right? I was watching this club owner. I gave her the note of Appalachia. Like, I, I just, I told her point blank I was like hey I think that the way that you speak you have a very cool voice but if you said Appalachia I think that is untapped gold mine for you just because you're expressive on stage you know what I mean like for me as a comedian I don't know if anyone else can relate to this but there are some people on stage where when they grab the microphone um I'm just kind of locked in with the person. Like, I'm not really listening to the punchline, the setup, whatever. I'm looking at their energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, this person was is someone that whenever they go on stage, I want to see what they have to say. They're an important person in the community, right? They book shows at a club. They're a stand-up comic. They write. They write jokes, right? I hope you do. I hope you write jokes because, honestly, the three or four times I've seen you, it's kind of the same. But again, you are a comic. You are a comic. I'm going to, I just want to affirm that. I, I think you have potential to be an amazing comedian, but you, I, I haven't seen you try any new jokes. I would love to see you try a premise that isn't centered around alcoholism. I see that as a total crutch for you. I really do. I feel like that might be a little world you're living in that's kind of safe for your comedy. Where you're like, oh, I can talk about alcoholism because I used to be an alcoholic and this is an honest feeling and emotion that I have around the topic. And I'm not denying that. Like, I know alcoholics. I've struggled with alcohol myself. You know, a billion people. What the fuck am I doing here? Um, but what I'm saying is that your voice... If you are focusing, I've seen you like three times. Every time you joke about uh, alcohol, your alcoholism, bro, you're kneecapping yourself so hard. Like every time I'm there, I'm puppy dog eyes for you. And I'm praying that you're doing a new joke or you're do trying something new. And that's what I really pray for these club owners too. I hope they try something new, man. Because this whole, I didn't know that I was walking through a minefield. I honestly had no idea until about two weeks ago I got clued in. And then in the past 48 hours, I'm like, oh, my God, I feel like I'm in Israel and Gaza right now. And I say that comedically with empathy for Palestinians that are experiencing that. Um, and I'll just say this since we're on the podcast off the cuff. I had the thought a while ago and I want to make it into a joke. But like um, Israel, Palestine is really devastating. Like how many Palestinians have died? You know what I mean? How many have died? A lot. Thousands, right? And 
when you say thousands of Palestinians have died, you're like, ah, that's tragic. Well, what if I said to you a thousand individual human beings that had thoughts, emotions, ambitions, goals? They had, and if you want to, if you want to go red pill on it, if you really want to go red pill on it, like a, from a Republican point of view, these people were workhorses. They had something to contribute to society, and Israel is genociding them, and our country is letting that happen. You know what I mean? So, like, any of this, the censorship I'm seeing in this scene, right? The censorship I'm seeing, I'm hearing about comics who I haven't even talked to, but I admire their comedy because it's so honest. It is so true. It is off the cuff. They might fuck up. They might say the R word on stage. They might be unabashful about it, but guess what? This comic I'm referring to is two years in. Have you heard? I don't know if you guys are familiar with stand-up comedy, but um, it's often thought that when someone starts stand-up, the first six years of their career, they're green. And if you don't know what green means, green is a term. I'm going to turn my car on here because I need to charge my phone. Green is a term that's used when we say that a comic hasn't developed their voice yet or they're like still getting to their best self. So when I hear that y'all are like beefing over petty shit like a word when we have comedians in the Seattle comedy scene that have so much to offer beyond your petty drama. I mean, dude, this breaks my heart. This really does. And this comic that you banned that said the R word on stage, I want you to know just, I, I've never talked to this dude personally. Like I've never had a deep conversation. I've never introduced myself and said, hi, my name's Sage. It's nice to meet you. I've seen him at probably... 178 mics, right? That's how many I've been to. I'm going to be conservative. I'm going to be conservative and I don't want to gaslight you. I'm not trying to blow this up, right? I've seen this comic 30 mics. More than that, but I'm going to say 30 because I'm being conservative. And when I first saw this comic, oh boy, this is, I can't believe I have a podcast, dude. This is so gold. Everyone's going to come under with me, and I'm sorry, you guys. This is just, this is crazy. Um, so the first time I saw this comic, I hadn't yet started stand-up comedy. I was working at a bank, Chase Bank. I was in the Year Up program. Um, and one of my friends uh, was also a banker in the program. And we became really close friends, him and I. He has a son. He's an African-American man that lives with his uh, son and his mom. Um, he's one of the people on planet Earth I trust most. And when I was, I know, like, I know everyone listening to this right now, like, sees me and it's like, wow, this guy's going places. <laughs> I'm not trying to be cocky. Jesus Christ. I don't know how to put this. Like, I, I understand that I'm entering a new phase of my comedy, but I'm not trying to gas myself up. I swear to God. But, um, I wasn't always this way, you guys. Like, where I got right now, where I am, where I'm going to go, I can't tell you how many nights I cried myself to sleep alone. I journaled in my journal about one of my partners, you know, or about a heartbreak. I started journaling in October 2023, and I journaled every single day um, until probably, probably Valentine's Day. And then I got so fucking, I got so like wound up in comedy and like I have so many shows and I'm so tired all the time. Like I don't have time. I, I say I don't have time to write, but here's the truth, bro. Here's the truth to you. Mavi, he's a rapper. He has this song called Time Travel. Look it up on Spotify. Mavi Time Travel. He, um, I, I just empathize with this lyric so much. It says, I can't, I can't write all the time because I can't lie. That's who I am, dude. That's who I've always been. I've always known I'm this person. But I'm entering a world that is, as we all know, it's a broken world, you guys. Like, the fact that... The fact that I get to find my voice and be a voice for... 
comedians that respect the craft of stand-up comedy that go up there, use their voice to assert their humanity while the world falls apart. You know what I mean? When I was first starting out in October and bombing every night, bro, those were some dark days. Those were some really dark days for me, man. I was going through heartbreak. I was still getting over an abortion I went through. I know a lot of you have heard that joke, bro. I know a lot of you have heard my abortion joke, but bro, that's not, that stems from real life. It's real. It happened. It's truthful. I'm still processing that. It's getting better, but like, that's something I live with every day, bro. So when I see a comedian go up there and say retard, or I see a comedian go up there and say faggot on stage with gusto unapologetically, and they get banned. That breaks my heart. Because as a club owner, I'm not a club owner. I want to state that right now, just for the record, I'm not. As a club owner, it's not your job to ban people and censor comics in the scene of Seattle. Definitely not in 2024. That's not the move you want to make. It's really not. I mean, Seattle's about to be Chicago, dude. And I'm not just saying that because I'm saying that because I'm Sage Cameron and I've been living this every day and I've met so many wonderful producers that are good people that do care about their comics that have been there for me on tough days, you know, like they're my friends. This is my tribe. So as a producer, I've learned from these people because that's who I'm going to take my notes from. The co producers that I know I respect, I know don't ban people because they say retard. Get over yourself, bro. It's a word. You're better than that. You're a comedian. This is stand-up comedy. This is not MSNBC DNC hour. It's not. I'm sorry. That's all I'll go on. Okay. Um... It just means the world to me, bro. Like, every one of you guys that's going out there and bombing, you gotta be respectful to these club owners. If you bomb, you have to own that shit. And you have to heed whatever the fuck they're saying. And if you're one of these comics that says, oh, these clubs are so PC. Oh, you know one I love to hear? I love to hear this one. I've heard this. I'm not gonna say any names. I've heard it from six or seven comics here in Seattle. And each of these comics, by the way, are people I've respected. And I've brought this mic up to them because I'm like, I think they would play well to this crowd. I say, hey, do you know about Queers to the Front on uh, at, at Comedy Slash Bar? Do you know about this mic? And I'll ask them that because as a comedian, I'm starting to realize like my purpose here, you know, like... I want to build a community of comedians I find funny, some I don't, but people that are good people. I have a good energy radar, you guys. I can, I feel when someone's toxic. I feel when someone has a good energy. I feel when someone's going through something. Like, I'm here for you all. Um, but we got to do better than that, guys. Club owners, again, okay, I'm rambling here. What are we at time-wise? I got to check. 28 minutes. Damn, dude. I thought I was at like an hour and a half. This is going to be a short episode. <sighs> okay. Um, uh, so club owners, here's what you need to do. You need to stop censoring these people. You need to unban every single person you've un that you have banned. Um, and I'm not asking you to like make them all fight in the Coliseum and unleash carnage. What I'm saying is <sighs> this is going to, this is going to sound hard to the club owners because it comedy to them is a business, right? Like, they, they understand the art, but first and foremost, it will always be the business to these club owners. And we have to understand that when we're coming at them or we're trying to approach them like that. They are warlords of the scene, respectfully. You know, I understand that. Um, but what you have to do is you... Ha like, I'm just going to tell you, I'm just going to mind dump, like, club owners, if I was in your control, what would, what would Sage Cameron do if he had the power that y'all did? That's a fun thought experiment, right? Let the monkey press the button. Why not? Um, but here's what I do. Comedy slash bar.
I would unban every single comic that you've banned from there that hasn't gotten violent or, you know, had a good reason to be banned. If you banned anybody for any sort of censorship related reason in regards to your liberal sensibilities or your, I can't even remember what I heard earlier, earlier tonight. I heard so much shit, you guys. Um, your liberal sensibilities, your uh, neighborhood group, Sam Miller, uh, Derek Sheen. These are all comics, by the way, like as an open micer, I have loved Derek Sheen, I didn't, I watched him in 2016 at laughs before I started stand up. Like he, for years, I thought about his Robin Williams joke and I still do to this day. Me and my best friend, Tyler, we talk about it probably once a year, but Derek Sheen, I can't even remember the setup punch, but it's like Hollywood, Tim Robbins. Oh God, it's a masterful misdirection, but it ends up being like a big feather hat and then the ghost of Robin Williams something. But I thought about that joke from 2016 till now, like so much, dude, that the joke's got me through so much, but all these comedians that are in their little hunky dory, like warm handoffs, like, oh, I know the booker. So if you book me here, I'll book you here. I get it's a business. I get that. But just know, like, Times are changing, you guys. My name's Sage Cameron. Times are going to be changing. Um, I love everybody. I don't mean to upset anybody. I just want to speak my truth, assert my humanity. Uh, free Palestine. My name was Sage Cameron, and um, this was episode two of Seattle Comedy with Sage Cameron, uh, with Sage himself. And to finish you off, I am um, just to paint the scene. Uh, I am at Peace of Mind Brewery, which is in Linwood. If I could just take you back a little bit. Um, before it was Peace of Mind Brewery, it was a different business. Uh, the name of that business was The Maddox Grill, right? The Maddox Grill. It was a restaurant. My father, my dad, um, he's been a working class man his whole fucking life. A lot of you know me. You know how empathetic I am. You know how good I am at connecting with people. You know that I understand how the way the world works. I get that from my dad, man. And my mom, but fuck. My dad is like, I can't even express how much I love that motherfucker. He's gotten me here. He's He's been there for me when no one else was. <laughs> Fuck, okay. This is not a soap opera, goddammit. Okay. So we're in the parking lot, right? Piece of my brewing. Used to be the Maddox Grill. He was the head chef there for 12 years. My dad was the head chef there. <laughs> For 12 years at the Maddox Grill in Linwood, Washington. <laughs> he fell in love there. He got up every day and went to work there. And cooked meals for people. Bro, I'm 25 and I'm living this stand-up life. And I realize I don't... I'm. Hopefully the time comes when I don't have to work a 9 to 5. Like, the fact that my dad had to live his whole life like that bro i don't want that for my dad but that's what happened that's what happens for that's what happens for 499 percent or not with jesus christ 499 out of 500 people in the world bro or in america there we are working class we are people we assert our humanity the only way we know how I'm not trying to hurt anyone. I don't want to tear anyone apart. I'm not trying to start drama. I am just trying to use my voice the best way I know how. And I'm looking out for myself. You know what I mean? Like, this is going to blow up in my face. I don't give a fuck if, like, I get banned from everywhere. I'm annexed. You know? Like, that's okay. I can, I can take that on the chin. But, like, ten years out... Ten years out, you guys... I just want to let all the comics in the community know how much I love them. But in that same vein, how deeply disturbed and disappointed and sh ashamed I am of what fucking cowards every single one of you are. 
every single one. I know we're comedians. I know we're funny people. But the fact that... Sorry. The fact that Sage Cameron didn't get to the scene until October 23. Bro, that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart so much. We have female comics that are going around that have been 86 from venues. And the bookers are taking the side of the abusers, bro. People know about this. They're silent. They continue on. They might talk to their friends. Oh, yeah, that's fucked up. But raise their voice. Oh, I'll go to hell. Use my voice. You mean say something into a microphone? Talk? That's way too out of left field. I can never do that. Fuck all of you. Fuck every single one of you for not stepping up and making me do this. Seriously. I love, I, and again, I love all of you, but I'm really upset. That's all I got. I should drop it there. Okay. Episode two, Sage Camera Podcast, 36 minutes. That's good. All right. All right, fuckers. Oh, jeez.